And today we got a special episode for you guys for the cooking portion. I got a French style chef with me. He's a sous chef. His name is Chef Richard from Monsieur Benjamin in San Francisco, a Michelin recommended restaurant. We're gonna kinda go do a little head to head today. We're gonna do a French style uni dish versus Japanese style uni dish. This should be interesting. Got it. Welcome back to Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and today we're harvesting sea urchin, purple sea urchin to be specific. Time for some uni. In this video I'm going to tell you guys about why you should harvest sea urchin. We're actually having a really big problem with sea urchin on the California coast and I'll tell you all about that in this video. So these purple urchin have been decimating all the kelp beds all over the coast. And if you live on the west coast, you can find sea urchin almost in any rocky coastline. And where I've found where there's the most sea urchin are these type of rocks that are just these slabs of rocks, not the places with the, a lot of boulders, not those kind of rocky areas. I haven't seen many urchin in those areas. More like this, just those really fat slabs of rocks. You gotta go at a negative tide. They are the furthest out in the intertidal zone out of any of the intertidal species. So you gotta go at the lowest of tides and you'll find them. Several years back, an unknown disease killed out a lot of the sea star population. And with the decline in sea stars, there was an increase in sea urchin because sea stars are their natural predator. And now we have this boom in sea urchin and the sea urchin are taking over the whole coast. If you're a diver, I know you know that all the kelp along the coast is disappearing. And it's due to the sea urchin, the purple urchin specifically. So harvest the purple urchins. They've been eating all the kelp along the coast, leaving nothing left for the abalone. And that's and the abalone closure is due to the sea urchin. It's because there are too many sea urchin that the abalone are not healthy and they're not able to reproduce. Well, here's a little one, a little tiny urchin. But well, let's check the yield here. Yeah, that's looking pretty decent there. It's pretty good, pretty good yield for a little tiny urchin. Flavor is really good. Very creamy, sweet too. Oh, I love uni. And we need to eat them all. We need to eat all the uni. Maybe a couple months ago when I went diving and I found these, I found some sea urchin that had no yield and I was gonna tell you guys uh, why, what, why that was. And the reason being, because there's so much, so many purple urchin, they're eating all the kelp and they're leaving nothing left for themselves. So they're even starving themselves out. And so now they're unhealthy. Also along with the abalone as well. Uh, the abalone becoming unhealthy because of the sea urchin. Have to get rid of these sea urchins somehow. So there's actually a group of divers that go every few months, go diving and they just kill a bunch of uni. And it actually helps the ecosystem. Well, they're doing their best at least. And uh, I'll put some of their information on the link below if you guys wanna get involved in that. But another reason why the yield may be small is that maybe they have just spawned as well. So they go through these periodic spawning cycles and they spawn during the winter months. And so if you get them right after winter, they may be empty, uh, regardless of where you are. So it's best to harvest them right before they spawn. So which is during the fall, that's the best time. And right now it's late summer, so it's pretty good. Pretty good. So go out there. Go get some sea urchin. Don't worry, I'm watching my back here. I can see it on the camera. But don't turn your back to the ocean. It could, out of nowhere, it could be a sneaker wave. Hit you, you'll get washed right out and die. But because they have been eating all the kelp beds and leaving nothing for themselves to even eat, you may even now find urchin and there may be no yield even before spawning season. 
and a lot of places they just become very unhealthy and you'll find no yield even in the peak of the season and another thing due to the rising temperature of the water the kelp are unable to grow back and kelp need very cold water in order for them to grow and due to global warming the water temperature rising and the sea urchin eating them they can't grow back the best thing we can do is harvest some sea urchin so if you didn't know all sea urchin have five pieces of these look at that this one looks pretty good so this is a empty sea urchin shell and you can see here like i was talking about the five pieces so one two three four five so you'll find the edible portions in each section just like that if you were some kind of crafty person you can use this to make ornaments or some kind of decoration i think it's a really good geometric pattern it's really cool you just have to take all the spikes off and you'll be left with that so if you want to harvest some sea urchin i think now is the time go out find a rocky coast around your area all along the west coast from Baja all the way up to Alaska. So if you're anywhere around there, you can find these purple urchin. So you don't have to be in California. You don't have to come to the same spot as I do. You can find them everywhere. So you just gotta go at the negative tide if you wanna be successful, all right? Negative tide and these rocky areas that have the, like one big rock. You know, they all connect not the ones with the boulders. Uh, those places I haven't found too many sea urchin, but good for rock crab, those kind of areas. Watch this big old sea anemone eat the sea, sea urchin. I'm gonna feed him. And it's gone. And if you guys wanna know more about this sea urchin info, I'll put a link in the description below for an article that you guys can read. All right guys, so we're at a cook spot now and I have here Chef Richard. Go ahead, tell him. Yeah, I'm a sous chef of Monster Benjamin. I cook mainly French food, but I have a background in Japanese food. Pressure to be out here with Chef Taku, ready to cook some food. Oh yeah. So his restaurant is a French restaurant. It's really good, I just ate there this week. Man, it's killer, so good. He's gonna do a French style uni dish. I'm gonna do a Japanese style uni dish. All right, so let's do this. Outdoor Chef Life apron available now on my website outdoorchefife.com. So with these ones, I'm gonna make bowls with them. And I'm gonna use that bowl to make my dish in. It's look pretty nice. Outdoor Chef Life knife roll. Available on OutdoorChefLife.com Also stickers some eggs here one part egg and three parts dashi and I have the dashi here that I just made earlier so there's one two I'm going to go two and a half two and a half parts this is white soy about a tablespoon uh, a little less than that and this is mirin, half a tablespoon as well. And you could add salt too, but I added salt to the dashi, so it should be good enough on the salt. We're just gonna drain the salt water out now. Now you're gonna be left with pure delicious uni.
or I'm going to put some of the uni. Some limpets as well. Add a little crunch to it. Uh, what do we have here, chef? Uh, we have toasted brioche with a French omelet, sea urchin garnished with lemon juice and chives. Ooh, that looks awesome. This is mine. This is the uni chawamushi with uni, limpids, shimeji mushrooms, and mitsuba. Ooh, both egg dishes, both uni. One French, one Japanese. Hell oh, yeah. Hell oh, yeah. Hey, it's James and Erica. Hi. Yeah, you guys seen James before. All right, let's try yours first, chef. Huh? I guess everybody grab one. Oh yeah. Gorgeous. It looks so good. Beautiful. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, thanks for coming out today. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. That winning part. Mm. Ultra creamy. Dang. So Ultra buttery. Mm -hmm. And then a little, just a little bit of lemon to just cut through it. Mm -hmm. Super good. And the brioche too. Mm -hmm. That's killer. Mm. Mm. Well, I could eat 20 more of those. Mm -hmm. huh. All right, guys, let's try this. Uni mushi. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. All right. That's delicious. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
so different from the first one too. Mm -hmm. Very good though. Ooh, so silky. Really so delicate. Silky. Yeah, very delicate. Jiggly. I like the limpets on the top too. That crunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has that, really? that mm. has that nice crunch. Mm. That's good stuff. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it gives more a little more flavor too. Bring yeah. it in the shell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really it's good. interesting the texture between the cooked one mm -hmm. and the raw one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little firmer. Yeah. But the yes. raw one gives it a nice creaminess. Yeah, since I put that the uni in there too, mm -hmm. also steamed. Some of the uni and fresh uni on top. Woo! All right. All right. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe. See you next time. Peace. Thanks for coming, Chef. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Oh, of course. Yeah, I had a great time. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. That was a lot of fun. Thanks yeah, it was good. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Killer dish. Hey. Dude, thank you. That beer. Yeah, let's make some more. Go ahead. You guys can eat these ones. Made more, but look at this. When you don't have to worry about looking nice, just fill it with uni. Shh. Take two. Oh, I'm filled with uni now. Too hot. Too hot. That oh, was so good. Oh, that's good. Chawanbushi is one of my favorite Japanese dishes. It's so good. If you never had it, it's really easy to make. You may not be able to find it in many restaurants, but you could definitely make it yourself.